Did the female cast of Queen Charlotte suffer starvation to fit into their heavy costumes? Is the long practice for bed scenes, which only last a few seconds, worth it? The show had to follow some of the most dangerous rules we've ever heard of. From the sweet encounters between Queen Charlotte and King George to the awful moments between Lord and Lady Danbury, a lot of practice went into these scenes as it was an important rule for the cast to get it right. According to India Amatifio, who portrayed the young Queen Charlotte, the hardest part of the love scenes was the choreographing and practicing for hours before filming. So that means every movement in the bed was planned. India explains how it's done. It's very much a collaboration. It's mapped out like a stunt or a dance. We know exactly where each hand is going or a leg in that way, it's very much choreographed. To achieve this rule better, Arsema Thomas, who played young Lady Danbury, mentioned that the help of intimacy coaches was employed and that the coaches helped them prioritize their comfort more than the story and the acting itself. Using intimacy coordinators might be one thing that kept those bed scenes real. But there's more to the creaking sounds of bed noises we hear when these scenes are being played. The rule was to make everything appear real even though it wasn't. The bed scenes between them show that the action can be one-sided, and the actress Arsema revealed that the bouncy ball between them made it easier for her to perform the act with actor Cyril Neri. Then Arsema added that what helped make these scenes look real was that the behind the scenes wasn't tense like the action itself, as they made jokes to feel at ease with themselves. With a show set in Regency era London, the producers preferred to have a British actor in most of the major roles, especially for the accent, and it was an important rule that helped many of the cast in the audition process of Queen Charlotte. However, Arsema, who's American, took her chances against the rule and convinced convinced the producers that she was British, because she had the British accent that she had learned many years before. And none of the casting directors could figure out that Arsema was breaking a rule, because she played the British accent to the point that she sounded like she was born there. According to Arsema, she resorted to the British accent during a dark period of her life while in college, and she kept it for four years, which made it easier for her to pass as British for her role in Queen Charlotte. The Bridgerton universe is expanding rapidly, right from Bridgerton to the first spin-off Queen Charlotte, and the rule of casting the right actors for specific characters has kept it going strong. And while this rule didn't particularly concern the cast, it greatly affected how they were selected to play the characters that suited them. This rule affected Sam Clement the most, as he could have gotten other roles in the Bridgerton universe and lost out on portraying Brimsley, who became an important supporting character to Queen Charlotte and was liked by many viewers. Sam revealed that he tried to be in Bridgerton for the first season as he auditioned for the role of Colin. Then he tried again in season two and managed to land himself a smaller role, where he could hardly be noticed. But he trusted his agent, who asked him to reject it for something bigger that may come later. And the crazy thing about the unspoken casting rule was that Sam got Brimsley's role when he wasn't even trying as hard as he did in the past. He said, I hadn't had a particularly good day, and I was due to do the tape. I just went out for some food and I came back. After loads and loads of Mexican food and margaritas, I went, OK, I'll just do the tape. And then here we are. So it was really important for Queen Charlotte's cast to be natural and not try too hard for the role that would make them shine in the Bridgerton universe. It's not enough to be natural at a role or have a British accent to be cast in Queen Charlotte, but it was a must for the new cast joining the universe to know and understand the Bridgerton series. In India's case, she had to become obsessed with the show as she preferred watching it to rehearsing most of the time. India said, I'd seen season one, then season two came out and we were in rehearsals. I binged a lot and probably should have been doing my lines, but I was obsessed. But it's a different case for Arsema, as she got away with this rule too, because she had never seen Bridgerton before being cast, so she had no idea who Lady Danbury was. According to the actress, she only got into Queen Charlotte with her understanding of what her character was about. And yet again, it worked, because Arsema sees Lady Danbury the same way the older cast member, Ajoa Ando, also sees the character, which made them align in ways that the old and young versions can't be told apart. One of the things that makes the Queen Charlotte and Bridgerton universe stand out is the Regency era costumes, which the cast had to endure as they are super uncomfortable. It was a difficult rule to stick to, as India revealed that she had to learn to work with it instead of fighting it. The corset dresses were very heavy to fit into, and what made it worse was all the authentic gear needed to tighten the dresses was worn, making Queen Charlotte's complaints about how dangerous the gowns were in the first episode very real and scary. India still remembers that the craziest costume she found very hard to pull off was the one that she had to wear for the coronation. The actress described describes the dress as a very complicated one, where she needed the support of a back brace and had to be stitched into it before they could make it work. And with costumes like this, there were many limitations the cast faced, as they couldn't sit for long or walk comfortably. But the worst issue India had to deal with was being unable to eat on set.
corset due to how she was squeezed into the corset dresses. According to India, the garment was so tight that she couldn't move her stomach. While speaking with BuzzFeed, India explained how crazy it was and how she coped with the compulsory rule attached to the costumes, saying it's a challenge. It's more about adjusting and finding what works for your body. You don't eat with them on because the food doesn't move, it just sits there. While India and the other actresses starved in the garments, India confessed that she could sip drinks with the clothes on. Right from the time, Queen Charlotte's hair has been a work of art and a masterpiece that took hours of making and perfection. And with the obvious rule of looking her part, the cast member Golda Rochevel had to endure the heavy wigs. The hair, which takes around two to three hours before being ready, is quite huge and different on many occasions. And it's not easy for Golda to carry it about. So for convenience, a special van was dedicated to Golda for her move and to travel with on set due to her huge wig and her heavy dresses. And Golda tried to make it as easy as possible by wearing Ugg boots whenever she wasn't walking or standing to ease the stress of carrying so many loads on her. The sweet thing about Golda's costumes is that she has grown to love them since she's been wearing them since her character was featured in the Bridgerton series. Unlike the new cast, who are finding it extra hard since they're just joining the Bridgerton world. Although Golda found a way to make the costume burdens easier, the dogs on set frustrated her efforts. After spending time and effort to prepare Golda as the older Queen Charlotte, the Pomeranian dogs on set frustrated everything by peeing on her costumes on four different occasions, leaving the dresses to start the stressful process all over again. Even Arsema, whose costumes were elaborate like those of India and Golda, had much to deal with to fit into the compulsory garments. According to Arsema, it took many hours and the help of two people to fit her into her corset dresses. But Arsema soon got used to dressing up elegantly, and she started getting used to the weight and the tightness to the point where she could pull into them by herself. The dresses might appear complicated to keep up with, but Arsema mentioned that they helped her become her character, because the costumes reminded her that the women were confined and not allowed any freedom to be expressive. Arsema got so used to her elegant costumes that she even had a favorite, which was a two-piece suit that made her feel gorgeous and seen. Anyone who ever mistakenly finds themselves on the set of Queen Charlotte won't only feel lucky, but likely to take some of the fancy objects on set with them. And this is the thing that the cast enjoyed, as there were limited rules on stealing stuff on set. Corey Milcreast, who portrays King George, took a telescope from the set. And it's not surprising, because his character was very attached to the object, which brings the planet Venus closer to him. For Arsema, she took the pleasure of eating and stealing a lot of food that she couldn't eat in her outrageous costume while filming. Golda has taken many items from the set and is looking forward to stealing the expensive tea sets. India is still trying to check if she's allowed to steal something, and once that's confirmed, she would love to go for the gold-plated mirrors. So, what do you think of these rules and limitations on the set of Queen Charlotte. Share your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.